Creating a good looking Power BI report can be quite challenging. You have probably seen tons of different examples where you thought, how did they ever achieve that? However, knowing a few little things here and there can open so many new possibilities and make the whole design process so much easier. And that's what we're gonna focus on in this video. I'm gonna take this report and turn it into this one. Now, let's get started. Welcome to How to Power BI. My name is Bas, and if this is the very first time for you visiting this channel, then make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date on all of my videos in which I share everything I know about Power BI. Now let's do a report makeover with this as our starting point. And you can see there's quite some work to be done. Now let's dive in straight away and go over all of the steps to get to this end result. Now, usually one of the first decisions that I take is the page size. Now here I want to have a more of a vertical page instead of the 16 by nine, which is the default. So I'm gonna change that by going here to the formatting options for the page. Then here we have canvas settings and here we can go for custom. Now let's say that we take for the height 1200 and then for the width, let's go for a thousand. Now the next thing that I do is change the background color so that we can clearly see also the borders of each visual. So I go here to canvas background. Now here for the color, we can go for a gray background and put the transparency to zero. Now you see, this looks very much like Windows 95 gray. So let's change it a little bit. So I'm gonna go back more colors and my go to gray color is the following 240 and then 243 and then 247. Now this is more of a silver gray, which looks a little bit more modern. So now that we have applied a different background color, you can clearly see the borders of each visual. Now the next thing that we can do is resize the visuals and reposition them on the page. Now the main graphs are these two here at the top. We have total sales and well, again, total sales. No, over here, that should be total cost. So let's go here to formatting, general, title and say over here, this is total cost. Now let's take this chart and put it here at the bottom. All right, now our main metrics are total sales and total cost. Now these charts that we have there in the middle, they are kind of related to sales and they might not be interesting for everybody, only for those people that wanna see a little bit more detail. So later on, we can also add a button to show them and hide them. Now to resize the visuals, you could of course take the visual go here to the bottom right corner, resize it just like this. However, I always try to be a little bit more exact than that. Instead of this, I would take the chart, go here to formatting options, general, and then here under properties, there we can decide on the size and also the exact position on the page. Now, here for the height, let's put in, let's say 200. And then here for the width, let's go for 800. Now, if I want to have it exactly in the middle, I would need 100 pixels from the left hand side. So horizontal, I need to put in 100. And you see, I have that 100 pixels to the left and 100 pixels to the right. Now here, how many pixels do I want at the top? Let's go for 150. Now for all of the other charts, we can do it in exactly the same way. So let's go to the next one, this one over here. And let's first choose the position. Now, I know that it needs to be 100 pixels from the left. So Let's put in a hundred. And then what number do we put in here for vertical? Well, I know that the chart at the top is 150 pixels from the top. It's 200 high. So therefore we are at 350. And let's say the space below it needs to be 50. So add these numbers up and we get to 400. So that's why I put in here 400. And this way we are Pixel perfect, okay? So everything is perfectly positioned. Now, what is the width that we can put in here? Well, here I would like to have the sales by class later on below it. And then here the sales by subcategory would like to be on the right hand side, just like this. So if I know that I have two charts that need to be next to one another, and I know that the width all the way from the left hand side of the left chart and the right hand side of the right chart is 800 pixels, and I want to have let's say 100 pixels in between, then I need to have each chart 350 pixels wide. Okay, so 350 plus 350, 700 plus the 100 in the middle is 800. Okay, so let's go to the first one. And then over here, we can say that it needs to be 350 wide. 
And let's do for the height, uh, 230, maybe a little bit more than the one that's at the top. And then for the sales by subcategory, there we can also go for a width of 350. And what should be the horizontal number that we put in here for position? That should be 550. Okay, because we have 350 plus the 100 on the left plus the 100 on the right gets us to 550. Now let me do this very quickly for all of the other ones. Now you see that by just aligning all of the visuals and applying a different background color, everything looks already so much better. You're probably thinking, what's up with the space here in the middle? Why isn't it exactly the same as the space that I have vertically? That's because I will need that space a bit later. So now it's time to focus on the visuals themselves a bit. Now, first, starting off here with the slice. And now you see we just have three different countries. So if you have it's just a few items and this is the only slicer, then probably for this report page, I wouldn't show it like this. I would show them as buttons. So if you go to format, then here slicer settings, you can change the orientation to horizontal. And then if you make it a little bit wider, then you see we have these buttons. Okay, now let's make it look just a bit better. So we don't need the header, so that one we can turn off. And then also we can make it less high so that it doesn't take that much space and align it here with the text. Now the background color I don't wanna have. So I go here to general effects and then here the background color we can turn off. Now for the ones that are currently not selected, I can go here to visual and then values then here for the font color, let's make the font color just a little bit lighter. Okay, now I'm going to put it a little bit to the right so that that last button aligns with the chart. Now let's go to the main charts. Now here you see we have mainly column and bar charts, which is one of my favorite charts and generally good. However, here for total sales, which we are showing over time, well, up to 12 points, I think a column chart could be fine. However, if you go over, then probably a line chart, an area chart would be better. So I'm gonna change this to an area chart, uh, just in case uh, we have multiple years in the future. So I'm gonna change this to either a line chart or an area chart. Now let's go for an area chart. Looks maybe a little bit more interesting. Okay, now then the next thing that I do is I try to get rid of as many elements as possible and then only add what I think is necessary and adds to the readability of the chart. So for example, in this case, we could remove the title from the axis. We don't need it. So I'm gonna go here to format and then here for the X axis, I'm going to turn the title off. And what about the Y axis? Well, actually we could also remove that one. So let's go here to the Y axis and first get rid of the title and then turn off the Y axis. Now. Okay, looks cleaner, but now I have no clue what the values are. So instead of going for the y-axis, because we just have a few data points, maybe it's better to go for data labels in this case. All right, so let's add some data labels to all of the data points. And let's maybe also add a few markers, if you like markers, to improve the readability. Now you see that already looks quite a bit cleaner. Now just to double check how it looks for the other countries, Germany, France, you see, looks pretty good. Now, I want to apply similar changes to the other charts on the page. Now, for example, here, sales by subcategory, there we also have titles for the X and Y axis. I want to remove those. And maybe instead of the X axis, I want to show data labels. Now, instead of having to redo all of these changes again, I just take the first chart, go to the Home tab, Format Painter, all right? So now we can just copy the formatting of that first chart to the next one. And then I just repeat that for all of the other charts. Now, once that is done, we can also change that chart here at the bottom, total cost, to the same chart type as we have there at the top, which was that area chart. Now, for all of the values that we show in the data labels, it also shows the display unit, millions, which might be a good thing. However, it also takes quite a bit of space and maybe takes away from the readability. And in this case, I think it's not strictly necessary if you know that all of the values are in millions or you place it somewhere in your report that the values are in millions. So instead of that, I want to go to the formatting and then data labels, and then say over here on the values that the display unit should be, well, millions, but without the sign. Now we cannot say that over here. So instead of that, we could put it to none. And we'll see, then we see the full value. However, work with the custom formatting strings. Now, here we are showing total sales. So I select here the total sales measure, and then here in the format, there we can put our custom formatting string. Now, if you don't know how they work, just check out this video over here. But here we could say 
that we want to show the values in millions, which you can do as follows, pound symbol, comma, pound symbol, pound symbol, zero, and then two commas to say we want to get rid of six zeros and we want to have one decimal, so dot zero, just like this. Now, press enter. And you see, that looks good, but for the other ones, there we still need to go to those charts one by one. And then here under data labels values, there uh, we still need to say that the display unit should be none. Another thing that's important is that you always check the readability of everything that's in your report. Now here for the sales by subcategory, this chart, there we have a problem with what we are showing on the y-axis because the subcategory names are not always readable. So I go here to y-axis and then just increase the max area width. All right, so that's much better. And then also here for the average cost and price chart, there, instead of having here average unit cost, I can just say unit cost and unit price. So let's rename these two so that it takes less space. Now, then the title we can change. So let's go here to format, general title. And then here we can just say unit price versus cost. And then put here that is the average. Now here for this chart, I find it a little bit more intuitive if the unit price comes first. So I just put the unit price before the unit cost. Another thing that's very important to check is always the y-axis of each visual. Now, for example, let's take that area chart here at the top. Now it doesn't start at zero, so that means it fluctuates much more and maybe the actual development is much flatter than it seems to be. So I'm gonna take that area chart and then go here to the y-axis. I'm gonna put the minimum to zero. You see that looks quite a bit different. And then after you change it to zero, just turn the y-axis off again, and then you do the same for the chart that's there at the bottom, total cost. Then the next thing that I would usually do is go over all of the titles of the charts that I have on this report page to make them a little bit more insightful. Now here at the moment, it's pretty straightforward, right? So we have sales by class, sales by subcategory, but we could add extra information to the titles to add a little bit more context or maybe make use of dynamic titles, which you can check out over here. For now, let's just say that the titles are good enough and let's go to the fun part. How can we now make this report really stand out and add something unique to it to take it to the next level? Now, I would say that if you don't need anything fancy, this is okay. However, if you want to add a bit more creativity, then let me show you how you could do that. Now, for example, for the background color, we could add a gradient. Now here in Power BI, that is not possible. So here in the canvas background, we can just choose colors, not gradients. So we have to go to PowerPoint, create a gradient background, and then use that over here. Now, I'm gonna open PowerPoint and then just add a new page, get rid of any text boxes that are on the page, then go to design. And here for the slide size, you can choose the same slide size as you have for the Power BI report page. And here we can choose a custom width and height. Now, it shows in centimeters or in inches, but instead of that, you can also just say, okay, we want to have 1000 pixels, PX, wide. And then you go to the height and you can also put it over here in pixels. So 1200 pixels high. All right, then click on okay, then ensure fit, and there you go. Now, the next thing is then to apply a gradient background color. So I go here to format background and then choose gradient fill. Now here for the gradient fill, I already set up something. So here we could say that we want to have radial and then the direction from the bottom left corner. And then here you can play around with where different colors start and where they end, how many stops in between. Usually I just go for two, choose a darker color because I want to go for a darker background for this example. And then here, a color that it's just a little bit lighter. Now, of course, this is just trial and error and see what you like. Now, here, you can also play around with the position, transparency, and brightness. And once you have exactly that background that you want, then you go to File, Save As. And now the important part, here you want to choose SVG. So not JPEG or PNG, because then when it stretches, it gets very bad quality. And with SVG, you don't have this problem. It can be as big as you want. All right, so SVG, that's important. Give it a name. So here, this is going to be my Power BI background. And then only this slide. And then go back to Power BI. And then here for the page settings, canvas background, there we can choose that picture. Now the image fit, also important. Here you wanna go for fit. 
and you see it exactly then fits to the entire page. Now, because we are now switching from a light background to a dark background, we have to make some updates to the text and to the chart. Okay, so let's go, for example, here to the top, to the title, where we then can choose for a white color text. Now let's then go to the chart right below it. Now here we could leave the background color. However, I want this design to be a bit more unique. And instead of having a background color, I'm gonna get rid of the background color. So here in the general, we can go to effects and turn the background color off. Now you see that the text is a bit difficult to read. So therefore let's update the font colors that we have for the X axis, the data labels and the title. So here for visual, here we can go to data labels and then values and then choose a white color. And you do the same for the axis. So let's go to the X axis. Also here, color white. And then last but not least, the title. So general, title, and then text color, white. And now we wanna make similar changes to the other ones. So home tab, format painter, and just copy over the formatting from the first one to the next ones. And there you go. Here you see it looks quite unique. However, for me, it's a bit too blue. So let's look for different colors that would match this background color. Now, how can you fig figure out what actually matches? Well, there are different websites that help you do this. For example, the color wheel from Adobe lets you put in a color and you see what the matching colors would be. And you have different options between complementary, split complementary, etc. Now, If you want to have complete color palettes, then you can also go to websites like Color Hunt. And there's another one that's called Coolers.co, where you have different color palettes already created for you and you see exactly what colors would match. Now, for example, here, I kind of like this one where we have almost the same kind of blue as what we have for the background. And you see, we have this orange and maybe this green bluish color that we could use. Now, let's first take the orange one and go back to Power BI. And then here for the first chart, I'm going to use those colors. So here, lines, and then here under colors, instead of blue, I'm gonna use that color. And now that we are updating the color, here for shade area, I'm just gonna put this up a little bit so that there's a little bit more transparency. Okay, perfect. And then we can go here to the next one, sales by subcategory. Also here, I would change the color for the bars to that same color orange. And just like this, I do it for the other ones as well. All right, so that is done. And you can see that for the lower chart, I went for a different color, this bluish green, because each color needs to mean something. Everything that's orange is related to the sales information. Everything that's blue and green is related to total cost. Now, the only thing that bothers me is that maybe it looks a little bit too flat. And instead of having here just one orange color, you could also go here to formatting, bars, and apply gradient formatting. So let's go for gradient, and then here base it on the sales where the highest gets our orange color, and then the lowest, there we go, a little bit lighter. And maybe also add a middle one, just like this. Click OK. And you see that might make it look just a bit more interesting. And then, of course, get rid of the legend, and then copy that formatting also to the other one. Now, when it comes to colors and making all of these changes, now I'm just doing it for one page. So I use the format painter. However, if this would be a bigger report, I would make use of the themes. So then I would set up a theme using over here the customize current theme option to set it up exactly with those colors that I need for the report. Now, I think it starts to look quite good. However, what still bothers me is that because there's no background color to the charts, it feels a bit unstructured. And to bring a little bit of structure, I want to add these lines and dots to it, just like this, so that there's a bit of structure. So now the question, how can you create something like that? Now we can just use PowerPoint, which is available to almost everybody. So how does that work? Now, first of all, you need to create a screenshot of the report page as it is at the moment. Now, to do that, you can do Alt-Shift-S, and then just take a screenshot of your report, now you see, now I have that screenshot, which I'm going to copy over to PowerPoint. So here in PowerPoint, first, solid fill white, then I paste in the picture, and now we can create the lines that we want to show. So let's go to insert, and let's start with the circles first, and I want, I want to have a circle over here. So hold the shift key to make it an even circle, and then I go for a white filling, and then here for shape effects, I would like to have a little bit of shadow in the bottom right corner. Now to adjust that shadow, 
we can go here to format shape. First, I get rid of the line around it. And then here, I go to special effects, shadow, and say that the shadow should be white. And then over here, we can play around with the transparency and size. But for now, let's just leave it as it is. And now I just duplicate it a few times to all of the places where I like it to be. Now, after you have these shapes, we could add lines in between them. Now, instead of the normal line, I go for the rectangle because that gives us a little bit more options. Because now we can say we don't want to have a line. We want to have a gradient fill and otherwise you would not have this gradient fill option. And here we have to make a few adjustments. So we can say that both the left as well as the right hand side should be white. However, here for the left, we're going to put it, the transparency to 100%. Now it might be that you have to rotate it. So we can click here on the rotate button and then just say flip vertically. And now we can just choose the width and the height that we need. Now for the width, let's put in five pixels. Okay, so also here, you can just type in pixels. And then here for the height, let's go for seven and then put it more or less in the middle of these circles, okay? And you see I still have that borderline, so I take the line and put the borderline off. Now I like it that it goes to the bottom of the other chart over here. And now I just want to take it again, copy paste it. Then I want to rotate it. So here in the shape format, rotate, we can flip it like this. And then we take the line and put it here a little bit above the other circles and make it less wide, which you can do by adjusting the height to, let's say five or a little bit less. There you go. And now we just need a connecting line to that dot over there and that's it. Okay, so I'm happy with how it looks. Now I need to take only those lines, not the background. And then first I would group it. And after you group it, now you can right click on the group and then save as picture. And that is then the picture that we can use in our Power BI report. Now, also here, it's important that you go for SVG. Okay, so SVG, because then we can make it as big without losing any quality. So let's call this one three lines Power BI. And then back in Power BI, you probably want to go to insert image. And then from here, choose the image that you just created. But SVG images are not an option. Okay, so hmm, what is the workaround? Well, instead of using the image, you can, as a workaround, use buttons. And then go for a black button, make it a little bit bigger over here, and then you go to style. Now in the style, there we have fill. So let's turn this one on, and then here we can go for browse, and then look for the picture. And you see now we can choose SVG. However, after you do this, you see it doesn't look quite right. Now here, there's transparency. So you might think, okay, let's put the transparency to zero, but then it's all white because there's still the white color background. Hmm. So it doesn't seem to be possible. Now you could go for icons, but with icons, you have the trouble, troubles that it's not so easy to resize it in the exact way that you would like it to be. So what is the workaround? we can make use of conditional formatting. Now, here, let's add the following measure. Let's call it background transparent. And then here, we can just type in RGBA, which is a color model to define a certain color. And then you just type in 255, 255, 255. And the last argument here, that is for the transparency. Now, if you put this to zero and then close the brackets, it means completely transparent background, okay? Or completely transparent color, which we can now apply to the background. So let's go back to our button. And then here for the color, we can use conditional formatting. Then switch to field value and choose the measure with that transparent color. Okay, so background transparent, click okay. And you see, we have a transparent background. Now, the only thing that we still need to change is the image fit to fit. All right, so that it nicely fits. And now we just have to reposition it so that it looks a little bit better. And over here, once you resize it to exactly the same size as it was in PowerPoint, you see it nicely fits. Now let's then also get rid of the borderlines. So here, borderlines, let's turn them off. 
And that's it. We have this special effect in our report and this creates, I think, a little bit more structure when you don't have the background colors for the charts. Now to make it a little bit more visible that these area charts are the main charts, I'm just going to go here to formatting options. And then for the title, I'm just going to increase the font size and do the same thing for the other one. And now the last thing that's still really important is, well, do we really need to show all of these charts to every person that looks at this report? Or is it for most of the people actually only relevant to see the total sales and total cost development and only for a few interested people to see all of these breakdowns? Well, if that is the case, then maybe we don't want to show these visuals at all. And another consideration is that when we go to this page, all of these visuals need to be loaded. So it takes a little bit of time to open this report page if you have a lot of visuals. And what you can do then is maybe hide the visuals so that they also don't get loaded when you go to the page. And only for those people that want to see it, click a button and only then show these visuals. Now, first of all, let me prove my point by going here to view. And then here we have performance analyzer. And then I go first to a different page, start recording, and then go to this page over here. Okay, and then you see all of the visuals that get loaded. However, if we would hide those in the middle, they would not be loaded, right? So if we go here to the selection pane and select here the visuals in the middle and then hide them. And then I go back to the empty page, start recording, go back to my example, then you see, well, the hidden visualizations, they don't get loaded. Okay, so if you have performance issues, well, this could be a consideration to hide some of the visuals on the page first and only load them when somebody wants to see the visual. Okay, now, how could we integrate this concept nicely in this report page? Now, let's do the following. Let's first bring back the visuals that were hidden. Now here, always keep everything nicely organized. You see at the moment, it's kind of a mess. So let's go visual by visual and give them a different name. For example, here, let's start at the top. Text box, well, that is my title. I drag it to the top. And then over here, instead of text box, I'm gonna call it title. And I do this for all of the other visuals as, uh, as well until I have everything organized. So now that everything is tidied up, let's work with buttons and bookmarks to show those charts in the middle only when I want them to show. Okay, now first the buttons, where can we get nice looking buttons from? Now also here, they have plenty of different websites that you could use. For example, one that I often use is flaticon.com. Now here, just look for, let's say, a plus icon and a minus icon. Now once you've found the icon that you wanna use, just adjust it, download it, and then insert it on a button in Power BI. So here in Power BI, I go to insert, and then here I can choose a button, go for blank button, and then here you go to style, and then for fill, there we can turn that one on, turn icon off, and here we can do the same trick, or you go for the icon, it's also possible here. Okay, now here I'm going to do the same trick as before. So I'm gonna choose background transparent, put the transparency to zero, and then browse for the picture that I just downloaded. And then for the image fit, either go for fit or fill and then resize it. And then you do exactly the same for the minus sign as well. So I inserted the minus icon and the plus icon. Then once you have them, then position them exactly there where you want them to be. So here for me, that is right next to the first main chart, total sales. And I've placed one on top of the other one. Now with the selection pane open, we can now create our two views, the one where all of the charts are visible and the one where the middle charts are hidden. So let's try this out. So I'm going to first create the open view. Now, when I say view, I'm talking about bookmarks, okay? That capture basically the state of all of the visuals. So also here, we need to go to view, bookmarks, open the bookmarks panel. So this is how I want it to look like when everything is open, right? So now let's capture that state by adding a bookmark and rename it to open, okay? And then we can do the same thing for the closed state. So hide all of the charts that you don't want to show when it's closed. So the ones that are in the middle here and the tree lines as well. Now here we don't want to show the minus icon, but we do want to show the plus icon. And then what about the chart here? Well, we want to have it probably a bit higher. The problem is though, bookmarks don't capture the position, which would be nice. 
However, as a workaround, we could, if we want this one to shift, we could duplicate it. So just copy and paste it and place it wherever you like it to be. The other one that we have here at the bottom, we just hide for the time being. All right, now this is the close state. Now to capture that state, we add a bookmark and call this one closed. Now let's check if it works. I click here on open. Now you see that copy of the total cost chart in the middle. Well, that one we don't want to show, but it wasn't there when we created that previous bookmark. So we have to update it. So let's hide that copy and then go here to open and just update the bookmark. Now let's see if it works. Let's click on closed and then open. You see, now it works. Now with bookmarks, you have to be a bit careful because if we now switch, let's say the slicer to Germany, and now I click on closed, you see it switches back to France. That is because for the bookmarks, you have these little check marks. So here we also store or capture the filtering and the sorting state when data is checked. So therefore I don't want to have it. Okay, because this could be very confusing for the end user for this case. Okay, now what about display? Display is important because we need to capture the whether a visual is visible or hidden. Okay, so that one we leave. And what about the current page? Well, that one switches to the page on which the bookmark is, which we are anyways when we click on that button. So that doesn't matter too much. And then what about all visuals versus selected visuals? All visuals, well, captures the state of everything that's on your report, which can be a little bit dangerous. So therefore, I go for selected visuals, all right? So if we select selected visuals, then we have to update the bookmarks again. So now I only select those visuals that I want to capture the state of. So for example, title and slicer, I don't need to select. And then here, this is my closed bookmark. So I update this one. And then I go to the open bookmark and I repeat the same process. So also here, I want to have only selected visuals and let's update the bookmark. All right, so now let's test the bookmarks. When I click on open, opens up those charts in the middle. If I click on close, it closes it. Okay, so that is working. However, how to trigger the bookmarks? Well, for that, we can just go to the button for the plus icon, go to action, turn it on. Then over here, we can choose bookmark action where we can now choose open so that when we click on it, holding the control key, then it opens up the charts. Okay. Now, then we have the minus button. Now also here we can add an action. It's going to be a bookmark action. And the bookmark that we want to trigger is the close. So now hold the control key and try it out again. So this closes it and this opens it up. All right. So that's it. I think it looks quite a bit better if you compare this to what we started off with over here. Now, I hope that along the way, you learned a few new tips and tricks that make this whole design process less intimidating and much easier. Now you see that with simple tools like PowerPoint, you can create unique design elements that you can then use in Power BI. Now, if you have any questions, then post them in the comment section below. If you like this video, then consider subscribing. And if you want to see some other videos on design, then check out these videos over here. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Shoot.